I'm going to an aggregator site as a consumer because I want to see who are the providers. I want to get information about those providers. And I predominantly want to get independent information from, from them. And these conversations about financial matters, answers to questions like, what should I do? Also happen outside, right? They happen on different publisher websites, uh, perhaps people reading your blogs. It could happen on aggregator sites as well. What is the role of those third party publishers and uh, organizations that are driving a lot of financial conversation forward? And how can financial brands leverage it to be to drive their digital engagement up as well? Yeah, great question. And I'm glad you brought it up because it's, it's really important. You know, historically, and it is changing somewhat, but historically, there's been this attitude oh, we have to get people to come to us, come to our site. You know, it used to be even worse. It was we had to drive them into the branch. But now at least there's an attitude of, oh, yeah, let's get them onto our website. Let's get them onto our mobile app. And you're never going to succeed with that. And so now, you know, there's, okay, well, people are going to Facebook. Let's go to where people are. But why are people on Facebook? Generally speaking, they're on Facebook to interact with friends, family, that kind of stuff. Why would they go to an aggregator site? Why would they go to a, a blog and not, not like mine, but generally, you know, uh, Dave Ramsey kind of a thing? Because they want to make smarter decisions about their financial lives. Now, what do financial brands typically do? They want to advertise on the site. Uh, they will say, hey, we are great. Think about the customer experience. I'm going to an aggregator site as a consumer because I want to see who are the providers. I want to get information about those providers. And I predominantly want to get independent information from, from them. You know, the old world, you know, pre-internet was if we wanted to, you know, open up a savings account, we'd get on the phone and call 10 local banks, find out what their rate was, make the decision. Same thing with like insurance, you call around. The beauty of the aggregator side is I can go to one place and see, save me a hell of a lot of time to see that. But then, so then the financial brand marketers look and say, oh, the people are going to those sites, let's advertise on those sites. But there's still a limit to how well even an aggregator site can help somebody make a decision if all they're providing them is numbers. Because what's going to happen is, you know, there might be 30 providers in the market, 10 of them will have the same exact rate, and the other 20 will actually be close enough that, hey, you know, maybe, maybe there's some reason. So they have to help people not just provide information, they have to provide help and assistance on how do I make the right decision. And so financial marketers, bank marketers, needs to be looking at this not in terms of, okay, let's go to where people are, but let's, let's figure out why people go to those other places and provide content that helps them make that decision. So if I were a financial brand marketer, I would probably post content on aggregator sites that don't even really talk about my bank at all or my bank's products or services or anything. I would recognize that what you're trying, what people are trying to do there is make smarter decisions. So I would post content that says, here's how to decide between providers. This message brought to you by my bank. You know what I mean? But the content itself wouldn't even, you know, mention that. Same thing with Facebook or any other channel. You've got to look at the context in which people are using some third party site or app and say, okay, this is what people are doing there. Let's Try to become part of the conversation, not redirect the conversation, not change the conversation, and not impose our views on the conversation, right. but truly be part of the conversation. And, you know, you look at Twitter, you know, I, I, I no names. I know names because well, I shouldn't be mentioning names, but no names because I also can't think of, you know, the specific names. But I see this in, on Twitter a lot. There are some brands that, you know, inject themselves and just talk about themselves 
And there are some brands that there's really a person behind the company name on this Twitter account, but they're very good at just being part of the conversation. Yeah. And not talking about themselves, but just mentioning the conversation. And they, you can see that there's some personality, there's an attitude there. They're, they're funny, they're quirky, they do these kinds of things. And, you know, there's, there's, some, there's a lot of value to that because over time, people start to have a, a more positive affinity and, and view of that because they say, well, I've been interacting with whoever it is behind, you know, the, the, the screen, the Wizard of Oz there, you know, behind the, 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 the machine. But um, they become part of the conversation versus trying to redirect the conversation or, you know, impose the conversation. You know, and I've seen a couple of brands recently uh, from a financial perspective go on Twitter, do things like, it will take this poll. If you were doing, and they think that they're becoming part of the conversation, but it's, you know, it, it's so clear that they're just, you know, doing traditional marketing stuff. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I think a lot of brands are still wrestling with how do you authentically become part of the conversation? And I know that's such an overworked word, but you know, there really are conversations going on in Twitter a lot of times, especially, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the world of, you know, you got to kind of pick your spots, you know, it's not just generic stuff, but, you know, we all have labels now. There's VC Twitter and this Twitter and politics Twitter, and fine, you know, FinTech Twitter. And we definitely have a lot of conversations in the FinTech Twitter world uh, of which, you know, the, the brands can be part of. Because if you really are thinking, hey, there's influencers, you you want to be part of the money Twitter conversation.